Hello. Where am I? There I am. Hi, everyone. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Is everything working okay? Camera seems okay. I can see the game. Thanks for joining me. Hi, Mark. I've had a quick look, and you like the look of the expansions? Good. Well, you'll see one in action right now. So, Viscounts of the West Kingdom. I did loads of West Kingdom stuff last year. You can see, if, if you're a West Kingdom fan, or you're curious, I did solo playthroughs for all the games. I did playthroughs of the Tome Saga cooperative modes for the three games. And on the 11th next week, two new expansions for Viscounts are coming to Kickstarter. And it's like when Mr. Bean showed you all the different colours of videos, isn't it? Uh, I am going to be playing through Gates of Gold today. Uh, and then Keeper of Keys is going to be coming this time next week. This time next week, exactly. You'll uh, hear me doing the same spiel about uh, Keeper of Keys. There's treasure chests, there's public buildings, there's heroes. But hey, that's that's for the future. For now, there are outsiders. There are new building goals. There are new castle goals. There are all sorts of things going on. Hopefully. Oh, my thing just disappeared there. Hopefully. Hi, Shem. Shem is in the chat. Co-designer Shem Phillips, along with S.J. McDonald, who did the you know, the original trilogy, who did the expansions. You help me out where I go wrong. So I am going to be doing the solo mode of the game today and hopefully doing better than I did in my original one, because I think that my original Viscount's solo playthrough was a, was a the one on camera at least was a, a bit of an embarrassment kind of strategy wise hopefully it's not going to demolish me too much here so new things we all start with a manuscript board well the players do the the bot isn't so bothered about these things and hopefully it should be there when i zoom in so the manuscript board not only is it a nice little way to organize all of your manuscripts as you earn them uh, i'm going to reveal one aren't i i won't look you know, it's a nice little place to slot in all of your manuscripts now. Obviously, you'd line up the colours if you were really doing it. Uh, it is also a place where you can unlock new abilities. So whenever you gain a card here, instead of gaining a card in the normal way, buying one where your Viscount is or getting to hire one from anywhere, you can instead take a King's Order card. And we start the game with one in our little uh, Townsfolk decks now. Uh, these will let you get Outsiders which are a new type of card we'll look at. You can, as soon as you've got a manuscript in any of the other three slots, and each of the manuscript boards, they've got the same abilities, but the colours are randomised. Uh, so as soon as I get a black manuscript, I can pay a resource to act as a silver. I can pay two silver to draw a card. I can pay three resources to shuffle around my player board. And you know, providing you've unlocked them and you can afford them, you can do any kind of uh, combinations of those you like on your turn. Oh, hi everyone. It's just all... Oh, the, ch the chat isn't working though, is it? There's just a big gap by the side of my head. Why isn't that working? I have been messing about with all of this stuff. So I sh it looks a bit different to normal, but hopefully uh, it won't all be for nothing. The game's working though. That's the most important thing. Maybe the chat will come up at some point. Oh, Matt, you, you got into Paladins and Viscounts. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I hope you've been enjoying them. Marty is not here today. Uh, generally, like at night, especially if, if Rach is in here, Marty's probably right under the table. I need to get some kind of like mood lighting down there and get some camera so you can see Marty. But I don't think he's even in here tonight. Uh, so no Marty cam for now. Yes, I'm doing the Builder AI. We'll, we'll see how I get on with that. I think it was, was it Manuscripts? Or was it, Ca I think it was Castle that completely destroyed me last time. Just like, I was letting him run riot in the castle and it was just getting filled with uh, workers while I wasn't really doing very much, to be honest. There we go, the chat's working again. Uh, it's a bit small, I'll, I'll fix that for next time. Uh, so yes, one of the new things, the Manuscript board and the abilities that it unlocks. There are also some uh, new majority cards to race for. So you've got the old ones for having three manuscripts of the same colour. They're there. You've got them. You're going on with them. Uh, but for building three buildings of the same colour or all three different buildings, you can claim one of these cards. Uh, so they're worth points at the end and they grant abilities. But you only use one in each game, but they are full of different abilities. For this particular game, if you have the building diversity uh, card, then uh, 
if you have an outsider, at least one outsider, in your player board, you can move an extra space with your Viscount for free. Like an ability that's unlocked on your board. Uh, if you build three of the same, when you gain a King's Order card, so the cards I showed you the way you can get the outsiders, uh, whenever you gain one of those, you get a silver as well. The Castle Majority card, rather than being the same one that increases your hand size in the, the base game, it works in the same way, so whoever has majority in the middle of the castle grabs hold of it, and if someone gets more people in the middle of the castle than them, uh, they take it away. Rather than it being just that increase your hand size, there are now several different options that it could be, along with, you know, there's the original ability, isn't it? Uh, and it's worth different points as well, based on the ability. So in this particular game, having majority in the centre of the castle will give you an extra point for uh, writing manuscripts. So that could be an interesting combo. If I go for doing manuscripts, then having a majority in the castle will help me do that, as well as I can earn ink and stuff, just like normal. Hi Heather. Hi Paul. Oh, first time live viewer. I'm glad you could catch me. Hi Boris. Hi everyone that I've missed, by the way. I'm chatting away. So what else has changed? We've got the outsiders. We should talk about the outsiders. So they're over on this side. We've got all the debts and deeds just as before. But now we have outsiders. These are obtained through the King's Order cards. So we talked about getting these. These go in your deck and can be played like normal cards. You can see it's, you know, you're going to have to move three. They cost three if you buy them, uh, and they give you a uh, merchant symbol. When they get shuffled off your player board, they have an ability. This is remove the king's order. It goes back to the pile, but get yourself an outsider. And the outsiders give you symbols just the same as before but they don't have an ability that goes off in the game. You can see they've all got the flag. They all have abilities that affect the end of the game. So in this case, the Guardians are for building the three buildings of the type it's showing you, get four points. Uh, the Rogue will let you flip a deed or a death at the end of the game, which can be really big as well because you know, of, of the way that the, the game ends based on when all the deeds or debts are taken. And then... There is majority scoring for whoever's flipped the opposite one. So if we run out of debts, whoever flipped the most deeds gets a load of points. So there's a there's a balance to all that. There's an art to all of that stuff. And uh, yeah, it can be affected a bit once we're at the end of the game. And you can see, you know, it's set in stone who's got the majority of what. Uh, getting an extra flip could be really important to you. And even if it's just flipping a debt, that's, uh, that's points you haven't lost anymore, isn't it? Uh, so, yes, you can get those. Also, rather than just playing the King's Order cards, you can destroy cards. You can destroy King's Order cards, just like uh, the, the normal Townsfolk cards. And when you do that, that's another way that they get removed from the display. And it's the time when you use their icons on the right-hand side. Uh, so this is only when they are exiled, removed that way. You will usually gain... Uh, some corruption. It's not a nice thing to do, but you can gain pretty big rewards. You know, three gold at a time from here, two free hires from here. It's uh, It can be really big if you get hold of those. The AI card has uh, tweaked a little bit as well, just to accommodate the new symbols. So as well as uh, reshuffling uh, the deck, if they are ever to gain or discard one of the outsider cards, they will get rid of the rightmost two cards from the display, the outsider cards, and then gain a resource before uh, the, the card, the normal cards in the box still. Before, obviously, it wouldn't reference outside cards and uh, it would just gain a resource. Now it's going to keep the display cycle in through. Keep refreshing it as if, you know, there was another player taking these cards and getting them away. There are also new cards. There are new starting cards. And I have adopted it so that the ones that were available to choose were only new ones. Obviously, you know, if you were playing it, you would just mix them all in, and it's just more options. For my game, I have Matilda, a criminal. And while she's in my display, whenever I gain a card, I can draw a card and discard a card. So hopefully cycle through, get to ones that I want, and get a bit of money. I've done all of my starting you know, position, get all of your money and all that stuff. There are also plenty of new cards mixed in to the main deck as well. You can see, I think, there we go, the Vagrant. 
over there. Anything with this symbol on it is new to the expansion. So the Vagrant, while uh, he is in your display, you can dismiss, you get to dismiss cards in this game to get to extra action points for the thing that you're doing. It usually has to be the card that's next to your Vicant. While the, Vi while the Vagrant is in your display, you can dismiss someone from anywhere. Uh, and I think that's the only one that's ended up right on top this time. But we'll, we'll see him, I'm sure. And there is a new manuscript in each of the piles all mixed in as well. Uh, the standard one is on the top, you know, just the three to start with of each colour. But there is, you know, th there are five new manuscripts mixed into these piles. So hopefully we'll see all of that stuff about. Hi, Helen. Thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying stuff. Uh, so, yes. Let's uh, let's get playing through. And so it's it's me to go first, which means the AI is always going to go last and have the last word. And so I've already got my starting hand and everything. We can decide what to do. So I so I'm against a builder. It's probably going to be a lot better at me than build at uh, building, no matter what I try and do. Let's see. I've got I've got some merchant things. I've got my starting king's order. I could start out, you know, getting an outsider. And say if I did get that rogue, fair enough. The ability doesn't trigger until the end of the game. But that's two building symbols. That's two um, castle symbols right from the start of the game. That's pretty powerful. I do have to wait until you know the card cycles out of my player board. But still, that's quite a nice thing to get. But I kind of feel like while my player board's empty, I would like to play the abbot there. Because while my player board's empty, we've got these symbols pre-printed on there. And as cards slide along, we're never going to see those symbols again. So the only thing that isn't a merchant symbol is my, my clergy symbol from the abbot there. I did start with one of each resource, a gold, an inkwell, and a stone. So I can get the action points that I need. So I think that's what I'm going to go for. So yes, we haven't played any criminals, don't have to worry about corruption. We've played a card, then we move our Viscount this many spaces. We can pay... Uh, silver to move more, but I don't think I'm going to. So I'm starting out here. I need to move two spaces. So I think that's going to put me. If I want to do manuscripts, I need to be on the inner track. So I've moved one space according to the arrows. Another space. Let's face this way. And uh, yes, I'm at this manuscript. I need three action points to be able to grab it. So I've got one on the card that I played. I've got one on my player board for the start of the game anyway. And I've got one that I can gain from an inkwell. So that gives me the three that I need, just about. And so I can grab my first manuscript. And it's not, I started with a yellow one as well. So I am uh, contributing towards getting sets. So this gives me four silver straight away. It's uh, not an end game scoring or an ability or anything like that. Just the lightning bolt, gain these things. Oh yeah, I could. I was thinking about... That's a good point, Matt. I think I was going to... I was thinking I was thinking about buying the pasta. But the pasta over here... So I've kind of skipped past. I can, I can dismiss a card, as I mentioned, at any time... Just before I do the action. And paying a money. I've got a lot of money and not a lot of inkwells. So I think rather than spend that inkwell, it is a good move to spend a money instead. Because I did start off with, uh, with five of it. Yeah, let's dismiss the pasta. When you dismiss a card... You get to use this ability. This is rearrange your player board. Not very useful to get that at the start of the game. There's no rearranging to do. But later on, that's going to be great. Uh, so just dismiss him. Got his extra action point. Saved myself an inkwell. And uh, what have we revealed? A deacon. If I'm going to go into manuscripts, the deacon has got a symbol on him. I haven't gained my four coins either, have I? One, two, three, four. And I would gain some virtue. Usually I'm going for criminals and stuff. My starting card, you know, my, my different starting card was a criminal. So I'm going to be getting a bit of corruption from that. But maybe I try and be virtuous this game. Uh, so the deacon would cost me two. So after you can follow along the, the round, we played a card, we moved the Viscount, we chose whether to dismiss someone or not. We did an action. Now we can buy the card that we're next to. So that pastor, maybe, uh, the deacon... Pasta got uh, dismissed. Sorry, Pasta. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm going to recruit him. He goes into my discard pile. So I'm not going to get to use him for a little while. And for recruiting him, he's got a recruiting bonus of gain a virtue. So I can move along my virtue here. I thought I'd knock that with setup, but 
my starting card did give me two corruption. So maybe I'm just going to end up in the middle. Get a little bit of good, a little bit of bad. Pasta. Yeah. Same, same word. <laughs> exactly. Uh, right. So I think I've bought the card. Has there been a collision? That's when the virtue and the corruption markers collide. Uh, there hasn't. And so draw back up to your hand limit, which at the start of the game is three cards. I've only played one. So I draw back up. I have got myself a squire who would like to build in the castle. Maybe I want to play a merchant next time while the merchant symbols are visible. Get a bit more out of that. But we don't have to worry about this just yet. Here's where I get all of my solo -y stuff wrong. So for the solo game, he's got special solo cards. We put him in this starting position. These are the resources. Uh, he gets a deed and a debt. And we take a couple of cards out of his uh, AI deck. Uh, but we basically reveal his card and he does stuff based on what his card is. So he is going to, that's just dismiss one, right? I'll get my uh, little symbols out here so I don't forget what he does with the symbols. The play action is he dismisses the Townsfolk card next to his Viscount and he would gain the thing on the card as well. So he dismisses the Charlatan and he's going to gain himself a debt. Sorry, Charlatan. Uh, so in setup, we got the things from uh, the the decks, just the, the deed and debt decks that are out here. But once we are in the game proper, like now, when you gain them, they come from these cards. In a two-player game, which is, let's face it, what we're simulating, uh, we have 12 of each card in the, the prosperity and the poverty card. So there are only 11 more debts until the end of the game. Uh, so yes, he's dismissed the card next to his Viscount. He moves his Viscount four spaces. The bot only moves on the outside, can take actions from the outside, because he plays by his own rules. So he's one, two, three, four spaces. And then what is he going to do? He's going to try and do some building. Makes sense. He's the builder. Uh, and if he can't do that, he's going to you know flip some debts and uh, get a resource. That's probably going to be later on, or if he didn't have enough action points. Because uh, we can we can look at his action points here. He's got one, two building action points right now. And he started off, because he's the builder, with loads of stone. So he can definitely build things. He builds the leftmost thing that he can afford to build, right? Yeah, he has to follow the same rules as us. He can't cross the river and all of that jazz. But he will build the leftmost building that he can afford, which is going to be this five cost building here. He gets points in the same way as us. His buildings are in a little bit of a different order than us, but that's just because uh, he tries to build from the left. So he'll spend the stone. And... I don't know why I'm so worried about getting it all wrong. And he just builds the, the leftmost thing clockwise, right? And he's going to gain himself a gold. That's going to be good when he wants to go into the main castle. And, yeah, that's that's him done. He doesn't need to do anything else. He doesn't have a hand or anything like that. We just reveal the cards as we need them for him. Right. Oh, and say when say pasta, your US English is here pasta. It, well, it's the it's the it's the same, isn't it? Pastor. I don't know. Maybe, maybe some people would say pastor. Yeah, the the AI design. Yeah, it's that. That's all you need to know. And it's. Uh, it's a formidable opponent just from that. It will, of course, you know, build up symbols. It will uh, get more difficult cards into its deck and get in my way and all sorts of stuff. But yeah, it's it's all from just drawing those cards and following a little, uh, not even a flowchart, just a list of, here's the thing that it does in this turn. Can it do this? No? Okay, do this thing then. Right, so I have still got my King's Order that I could play, get myself an Outsider. And maybe think about, we could get like a, a rogue and stuff. Uh, the Oh, yes. Thank you, Shan. Also, for building things, the AI is going to reveal things on its board. For us, it's abilities and stuff. But the AI gets some goodies. Whenever you see the plus a card symbol, he gains one of his future cards. So all the brown ones are his starting cards. A few were removed based on his uh, player board. But he gains a future one now. It was all shuffled up. It goes into his discard pile now. Yes. So on mine, 
so yeah, the, ki the King's Order, I could get myself an Outsider. Maybe I want that just moving along my player board. Get hold of a nice card with a few symbols on it. The few abilities start moving towards things. Because, you know, the Squire here doesn't have any abilities at all, end game or otherwise. The Financer, always nice to just get a bit of extra money, discard some cards to get to the cards I've earned more. Maybe do a King's Order now, and then do a Financer start getting through to try and get to that Deacon stuff. What about that? Yeah, the cards are evil. Yeah, that's that's when... Yeah, th things seem all right. Things seem manageable when he's just doing the brown cards. But when it gets to loads and loads of those uh, future cards, yeah, things get scary. So, yeah, let's, let's put the King's Order out. So this provides me with one merchant symbol. I'm going to have to move three spaces. So I should think about where I'm going to end up rather than just wanting a card. So one, two, three. I can trade in two merchant symbols would be on the bottom wouldn't it, after i've pressed the top uh two merchant symbols for an inkwell which you know if i'm going to go for manuscripts it would be good to have inkwells in the bank and then the card to dismiss a vagrant with a criminal symbol it's cheap just one coin to dismiss the vagrant i would get to rearrange and so i could have my king's order moving out quicker that seems all right to me so yeah move three spaces one two three i could have moved one two three as well four symbols lets you flip a deed or a debt and i would still be next to the vagrant i think we, we can worry about that a bit later yeah i would like some inkwells so i've got three merchant symbols two on my player board for the start of the game one on my king's order you can use coins as extra symbols so there's no difference basically between dismissing this person and spending a coin unless i want the the bonus or i want to get rid of this card to see what's underneath it maybe i want that ability i can dismiss someone from anywhere on the board rather than right next to me it's only while he's in my player board and it kind of counteracts my virtuousness that i said i was going to do but yeah let's see what's underneath i'm going to dismiss the vagrant let's zoom in a little bit for his extraction points. Oh, the Watchman. It gives me some castle points. See, I've, I've just got him. Just from that castle leader card, I've got it in my head now that I want to do manuscripts and uh, castles. Right, so I had four action points. Every two gives me an inkwell. I could spend some more money to get even more, but I think I'm going to live with two for now. Because I've got three inkwells now, and do I want to hire the Watchman? So when the Watchman is pushed off my player board, I would... I could gain someone for free or destroy a card, which could be good if I just want to you know, dismiss outsiders by destroying King's Order cards by getting them later. It's a cheap card for early on, and it's got, it's got the castle symbol at least that I need. And I would get to reshuffle my deck, which would put him in my draw deck as well as the Deacon. You know what? I think I'm going to recruit him. That seems like a good thing to do. Hi, Hans. Welcome in. How are you doing? You're just in time to recruit a watchman. And so we recruit the watchman, and then we do his ability. Yeah, exactly. Cheap as well. Like, you don't want to go for merchants tons, especially later on. Like, because the merchant symbols give you resources and money and all sorts of great stuff, but... Having them at the end of the game is is a waste. There's been like... It's, I was going to say solo games, but there's been multiplayer games as well where I've just ended up with loads of things, but I haven't done anything with those things. And while the, the AI opponent gets a point each for resources at the end of the game, you get nothing. So shuffle my deck up. Let's just check I've done everything. Yes, I moved, I dismissed, I did an action, I recruited, there has not been a collision, I draw back up, and will it be? No, it's Matilda though. My uh, my special starting card, my uh, sound effect that isn't part of just your starting deck, and is part of the new expansion as well. And we're not far from the King's Order popping off and being able to push off. Oh, I never did the, the Vagrant ability, did I, for dismissing the Vagrant? I think I do want them in that order. Let's get the King's order moved off the player board as quickly as possible. When I dismissed him, I could have rearranged my player board. 
That's enough for me, though. Don't forget to pay my... Oh, did I not pay for that? There we go. I've still got three money. Still got quite a nest egg here of stuff. And it is time for the AI opponent. Move his card along. And what is he going to get? He's getting a, getting a criminal. So, like me, gains a corruption for every criminal symbol on his player board now. It's just the one. And then gains a debt. So we are going to have to pile up some of his cards. Actually, when we zoom in, like there's there's more space to the left on the camera. So maybe we can have some stuff spread out. Then he's going to move four spaces. One, two, three, four. Collide. I can rearrange my player board if I like. I don't think I'm really going to particularly want to right now. But hey, it's, it's nice to have the option. Then he's going to do his preferred action or he's going to flip a deed or a debt and gain a corruption. So can he build? He can. Because he's got criminal is a wild card. So one, two, three building symbols. We just count the ones on his play board. He's got no stone to contribute, but the smallest buildings here uh, cost three action points each. So yes, he can. He is going to build this one. So he gets to dismiss someone for free. Right, yep. So let's get the right area on there. He's going to build. That gives him a virtue. Slide him along there. And then he dismisses the townsfolk card in the region that he's in, the traitor. And for that, he gains a corruption. There we go. A lot of virtue and corruption this turn. And he's done another building. Oh, that means he's got two of the three different types out. He doesn't care about the abilities on those, you know, building variety and uh, all of your, all three buildings of the same type. He doesn't care about what they do. He just cares about their worth points. And as the builder AI, there's a good chance he's getting those five points. Hi, Tobias. Oh, I'm glad you were able to catch it. Oh, you're going to leave immediately. Well, I'm glad you dropped her. Yeah, and I hope you enjoy the playthrough when you get a chance to watch it. So, bot, we've done all your stuff. Haven't forgotten anything. Yes, yes, yes. And or is that just that's just when he gains a card, right? I shouldn't have given him that. That's just when he gains a card, he gets that ability. I think. When he dismisses a townsfolk, he gains a card instead. We'll see. I think I'm wrong about dismissing that uh, person. He got it immediately. And then when in the future, when he gains a card, he dismisses the person next to him as well. He gains a future card and dismisses, I think. Right. So me. What have I got? I've got Matilda. Seems like a good good a time as any to get Matilda out. I could I could do a manuscript, couldn't I? Let's see, Matilda's only got a one, so I'd only get to move one space. So it would be down here. And that's a it's nice. It's a free hire. It's a second blue, which in a way you want different colors of manuscripts because I want to unlock different abilities. I want points. You know, it's 16 points for a set of all different uh, manuscripts at the end of the game. You remind me, I should have uh, I should have the player aid that tells me that <laughs> next to me. It, it gives you like your starting resources and stuff, but it's also a player aid on the other side. Yeah, so you want different types, but if I did go for a second blue manuscript, I'm only one away from the majority card, three points at the end of the game, and two extra merchant symbols whenever I need them. So maybe that's the thing to get. Gain a deed, and it's a colour that I need. Gain a virtue, and it's a colour that I need. But all those things I have in common is that they're far away. So I think I might just double up on blues for now. Well, this, this one up here lets you... It does cost four, but it lets you build... I think I'm going to double up on blue, though. What do you reckon to that? Oh, I got it right. Phew. That makes a change. <laughs> right, so, yes, we move everything along and then decide what we're playing. I think I'm going to go for Matilda. She's a criminal. So you gain a corruption for every criminal on your player board now. And while she's there, when I gain a card, I can also draw a card and discard a card and get a money. Okay, so we're going for manuscripts. We could go for just some more merchanting, but I, I did gain inkwells and stuff as well. 
so where are we down here i'm just moving the one space just the one space and dismissing the miner wouldn't give me any relevant action points it helped me with some uh, building but I think I'm just going to go for my manuscript. So I've got the two action points for my player board. I can spend an inkwell for my third. And that's going to give me another. This is where we start uh, getting in the way of the camera, isn't it? Or we'll start not having enough space for everything. And I've got myself my second blue manuscript, which instantly gives me a hire from anywhere. So what would I like? Who would I like to come and uh, work for me? So the scoundrel, criminal symbols are great, you know, wild card, but yeah, there's, there's the corruption to worry about. The chevalier, chevalier? I, yeah, I, I, this is uh, going back to the first live stream. Never learned if I should be pronouncing it like that. I'm just thinking it's got the castle symbol. And another merchant, which I am going to be good at if I do those blue manuscripts. The peddler there, triple merchanting. Although you kind of want. You know, I'm, I'm leaning more towards getting an expensive card. It's free. I could gain myself whenever you gain cards, whether it's hiring them or getting them for free. You can choose to get a King's Order card and uh, get in on those outsiders. Maybe that's something to do. That's just merchant symbols, though. No, I'm, I'm going to gain him. He's coming in so I can discard a card. What do I not really want to play? Squire isn't very exciting. He has got the symbol that I want, kind of. Could help me go in the castle. But the financer will get me money and discard straight away. So, yeah, I'll discard the Squire. And because I hired someone, uh, I haven't paid for that hire, have I? No, it's free. It's free. Uh, because I hired someone, I get to draw a card now and then discard a card. The lender lets you flip deeds and debts and two merchant symbols. I'm going to keep her over the financer. And gain a coin. There we go. Because I did... I started with... I'm just about to see, right? Uh, I started with a deed, which is a point. If you flip a deed, you get three points. Uh, a debt, minus two points. If you flip a debt, it's not minus two points anymore. And you get a, a Cuba resource. Oh, yes. Thanks, Matt. Yes. Uh, my new hire should be in my discard pile as well. So I've only got one card. So that's good for getting through your deck more and more. So I hired. There has not been a collision yet. Draw back up. And I think we're just about there. So journeyman and laborer. Maybe I'll get into some building. I've got a criminal symbol. I've got one stone. I could do a little build. I want to give him all the glory. Uh, so, slide the cards along. Slide the player board along with them. And let's see what we've got here. So, a clergy and a building symbol. Flip a deed or a death. So, he flips the type that he's flipped the least of. And then if there's a tie, it's debts, right? Yes, if there's a tie, it will flip a debt. Because then... It gains a resource. Which resources does he want? Well, of course, he wants stone. Because he's the builder. When he, If he's got six stone, he'll have some gold. If he's already got six stone and four gold, he'll have some inkwells. But in this case, he's going to gain himself a stone for flipping that uh, debt. And he's earned himself two points there. So he flips. He moves his Viscount to... Oh yeah, I could, I could, I could uh, pay to hire the miner. I don't think I really want to particularly get into just a building symbol, though. It is nice for virtue, for sure. Get a virtue now, virtue every time he's played. Because yeah, Mark's saying that you know oh, that was a free hire, that was an ability. I can choose to hire at the end of my turn still and pay. But I think I'm going to hold out. Thanks for reminding me, because I, I had forgot. Uh, right. So he's moving two spaces. One. Two. He's over here. So he is going to try and get a manuscript. So how many clergy symbols has he got? One, two. He's got no inkwells, so he can't get a manuscript. Can he do a building? His preferred action. He's got one, two, three, four building symbols. 
So he can't quite build the better one. He is going to build another small building. Leftmost space. So he's going to get himself a deed over here. And a virtue. And in future now, anytime he shuffles his deck, he gets a virtue. Give him a deed. Yeah, he's done his thing there. So that is his turn. And simple as that. It's back to us. So what do you reckon? I So I, I could do a build. I do have one stone. And I've got a criminal. It would be moving two. Where could I build? I could build, actually. I would collide with the bot, which isn't great, because you know, usually when you collide, you get to rearrange your player board. Whenever the bot would get to rearrange his player board, instead, he discards two outsiders, which would be the rogue that I want, and get a resource, which I don't really want to happen if I can help it. So I would probably want to move a bit further. Because the advantage of building... Actually, I, that, that space isn't even connected. It's the space over here that's connected. Yeah, I'd want to move just one. Build this, get a stone, complete the link, and get another virtue. That would be nice, but... You can pay to move more. I could get to flip a deed or a debt. I could do stuff over there. I don't have to do that, though. I could, I could be merchanting. Moving one or two. You know, pay four to flip them over. The oh right, so they shouldn't have flipped, and they shouldn't have dismissed uh, someone and gained the virtue. So these ones just these abilities just trigger when the thing happens, rather than this one is just when it originally happens. So. Yeah, we could get in on a bit of building because then we'd unlock an ability as well. It's not a bad thing to do some some of it. And the King's Order card's coming off. So actually, before we think about anything, I can gain myself an outsider. So just the there's there's not big changes. Like the, the AI is you know competing for the the building majority cards. So the first to build three different things or three of the same kind. Is in there. Uh, it doesn't care about the ability that's on them, but will get the points from it. And you know, doesn't get a manuscript board. Doesn't do those extra actions, but is still, you know, it's is still grabbing things and trying to get the the sets as usual. Is clearing away uh, outsiders out of the game as well. Move two if you pass by bottom. You can go after the. Oh, I can just go past him. I see what you mean. Yeah, I think we should do a building. So, oh, I need to gain my outsider though, don't I? So, my King's Order card is falling out of my player board. So, goes back to the supply. And then I gain myself an outsider card. And I think that the rogue is appealing to me. So, we're not dismissing. We didn't destroy the King's Order card. We're not dismissing an outsider. We're gaining an outsider. So, we don't get this. It's not got the, you know, the usual cards have got the the triangle and the cross. This has just got the, the dismissing symbol. But that's going to be two extra castle symbols. If I can start getting people in the castle, that's going to be pretty good. So slide that along and we see a new one. So the scholar, a point plus an extra point per uh, manuscript of that color. Right. So I've gained my outsider. Now it's time to slide my cards along and put a new one out. And we're going for building, aren't we? The laborer's coming out. So I've got one, two, and with my stone, that's going to be three. I need to move two spaces. And yes, as Francis said, if I go along the bottom, I don't have to go and cause a collision. So I can only build my small building. But I do have choice in that because... I can build one that whenever I hire, whenever I hire someone, I can uh, discard a card, get to the cards that I want the most. Whenever there is a collision, if I have no criminals, I gain a virtue, which you know, I, I was going to try and be virtuous. Or your hand size is increased by one, so more choice in that way. I do lean towards just hand size and choice. Discarding whenever you hire is nice, especially for free hires. 
But I think I'm going to go for hand size. The benefits that I could gain. Do I want a gold? Good if I want to be putting people in the castle. But better than just gaining a resource. Why not flip a deed or a debt? I'll flip a debt and gain a resource that way. And then I've uh, made some points out of the bargain as well. So I'm going to flip a debt. And I could choose to gain a stone. Because I don't have one now. So it would be harder to build in future. Now let's go, let's go for gold. Because hopefully with all of this stuff, I'm going to be going in the castle quite soon. I hope. Yeah, like... The... the components and stuff it's you know, having having just received you know like the the city of crowns uh expansion from the kickstarter for paladins like the the components and stuff it looks exactly like getting that box right so i've done a bit of building i didn't i, I could have just dismissed the scoundrel and that's actually i could have hung onto my stone that way couldn't i i'm running out of money but I think, yeah, I'm going to hang on to my stone and just pay a coin to dismiss the scoundrel. Because then I can discard a card. Journeyman a free hire and a virtue. Lender's always nice to, to be flipping deeds and debts. I'm going to hang on to the journeyman. And then maybe, do I want to hire the debt collector? Not if I want to be virtuous. But I, di I didn't unlock that ability. I think I'm happy just having dismissed someone. Although hiring while Matilda is in my player board, I'll get the the bonus coin, so it's kind of a discount on hiring. No, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna save that ability for now. So drawing back up, my hand limit is four now, so I'm gonna run out of space. There's my deacon. There's a thief. There's a trader. Unfortunately, though, the deacon's coming in just as the abbot's leaving. Although I do have Matilda, that's gonna count as a a symbol of my choice. But that's all for a future turn, because it's time to see how the builder's getting on. Let's see. First of all, they're going to dismiss someone from where they are. So they're dismissing the debt collector, and they gain a corruption for that. Then, they're moving two spaces. Oh, you can see them on the wall, can't you? I don't even need to be changing angles. They move two spaces, and then they're going to try and do a castle action. So they will not put one person into the castle. They will put at least two people in the castle. These are the action points they need. This is how many workers they'll put into the castle. So how many castle symbols have they got? One, two, coupled with the gold, three, four. So they're going to get to put two people into the castle in the section that they're in. Normally, you know, if I do this, I've got to be in the middle. Bot doesn't have to worry about that. So they're going to get two people in there. Stuff starts happening in the castle when you have three of your worker in a section. But, you know, they've staked the claim. And I think over there, we're done, right? Yes. Right. Swinging back over to me. Is it time to get the deacon out? And the deacon's added ability. If you do a manuscript while you've got the deacon out, you get a virtue. Hmm. What would I like to do, though? I can move two spaces if I played the Deacon. Two spaces away. One, two. So it would be this one. There's a colour I haven't got. It's gain a virtue, which is nice. I would gain a virtue for doing the action. I would gain a virtue in the middle. Hmm. You have to pay gold for IA. For IA... What did I do? But this did I dismiss someone and not pay? I'm not sure. I'll wait for you to Oh the AI spent a gold. Ah, thank you. Yeah, I don't want them getting more resources than they're entitled to. Hey Souls Roll, how many Monty Python jokes jokes have you missed? In general, or in this stream, I, d I don't believe you've missed any in this stream. Well, you never know. There could have been unwitting ones. Right. So, yes. I'm I'm thinking about doing a manuscript, aren't I? I'm tempted, you know. I don't know if I'm going to be much competition for it, but for building three buildings of the same type, this manuscript over here, if I paid to move one more, 
would be another building. It's a colour that I want. It's not as much virtue, but I feel like that's a decent thing to do. So the abbot leaves, unfortunately. Matilda coming in. The deacon's getting played. So I've got two clergy symbols. And it does mean if I if I want the full manuscript, I'm going to have to spend all of my lovely inkwells. But I think getting a building out is okay. I, d I don't know if I can realistically compete for this, but let's try. So I get to move two spaces. One, two, and then I can pay a silver to move extra spaces. So there's my silver. And yeah, let's pay the two inkwells. And let's try and do this. It's like, I've got another criminal card out here. I did take a stone as well. So, I know that I'm jumping around with my thoughts again. And I need to remember I do all of the things. But, next turn, Matilda will leave. But, the labourer will still be there. So there's one building symbol. I could play the thief. There's a criminal wildcard symbol. And I have a stone. Cost three. As long as the bot doesn't build their next one, which they might well do, then I could get the specialized builder bonus, and that would be quite nice. Right. So I've I've gotten a manuscript over there, and I can build one of these buildings. So when there's a collision, if I have no criminals, gain a virtue. Or when I hire a card, I can discard a card. I think that one, because at least in the near future, I've just planned out a, a couple of turns where I play criminals. So I think, yeah, when I hire, I can discard. And so I, I assume it's just it's just in the region that I'm in, right? Because that's... Or is it just anywhere that I can place one? I don't normally build from these. Hey, board then play. Thanks for joining us from Sydney. I'm glad you could be here. Hey, Daryl with one R. And his catch-up names are. But, uh, oh, the specialized builder card goes with Matilda as well, because the special ability that you get when you get a King's Order card, you uh, can get a coin from there. Matilda, when you hire, you get a coin. Yeah, that is a really good one. So... So I could build anywhere, which means let's link up and get a bonus somewhere. So down here, I would just gain a stone, but I could get a virtue. Over here, I could destroy a card and gain a gold. Up at the top, I could hire a card, which is good while Matilda's still out, and get a virtue. That's what I'm leaning towards. Get a virtue and shuffle so, the, so Matilda could stay in. Hmm, no, I'm not as excited by that one. Or down here, it's get a gold and a debt. I think the hiring a card, right? Hiring a card for free and getting a virtue. Virtue from the deacon as well. Let's not forget that. So there will be a collision. I do have a criminal on my playboard, so good job I didn't get that ability. And I can hire someone. Who should we hire? So the peddler. So in terms of expensive, the brawler over here. A criminal symbol. And it's, it's a new card. Let's let's zoom in so you can see the brand new card. When he falls off your playboard, draw a card, get a coin, get a virtue. The gatherer is also new. Uh, gain a king's order for free or rearrange your deck as soon as uh, the gatherer comes in as well. It'd be a nice combo if I'm going to get this specialized builder thing. Although it is, it's using a free hire a higher on just uh, something that's one coin. The miner could get me virtue now. It's building that I'm not really going towards. But I could tip the scales on my player board and just get deeds instead of debts and make the bot get a corruption. But I feel like, although I'm not saving too much money, that gatherer card's pretty nice. And I would reshuffle right now. I'm going to go for that. For my free hire. So I need to reshuffle. 
There's nothing else I'm missing, is there? Oh, I, I've hired a card. Oh, and I, oh, I could, though. Before we shuffle her in. Oh, actually, I've, I've just shuffled, haven't I? So, yeah, let's, uh, let's not change our minds. But I was thinking what I could have done then instead is... What I could have done is get a King's Order card. Anytime that I hire, I can hire a King's Order card. And so when it's free, King's Orders normally cost you three. That would have been a good saving. And if I'm getting this specialized bonus and I've got uh, Matilda and stuff, that would have been a good thing to go for. Uh, so, oh, I also need to draw and discard a card and get a coin. So who are we discarding? We want the Thief, don't we, if we're going to do some building. The Trader. Anytime you trade, you get a coin. Mm, I'm not that fussed. Right now, anyway. So I think I'm all caught up there. I can still do my normal buy if I want the Peddler. Mm, so if there's a collision while he's on your player board, you get a gold. It's nice, but I'm not that excited. I've only got three money. I don't want to just be throwing it around. And when I hire someone, I, get, I can discard as well. That's my player board ability. So I think... Journeyman. He's gone. Let's get to drawing the ones that I really want. And there is finally the end of my turn. So draw two back up. Okay, I can see some things happening. Uh, if you... Sh oh, yes. Whenever, whenever you shuffle, if you've got criminals, you move your marker. If you haven't got them, you get some virtue. And... Hiring. I think I've caught up with all of them now. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Shem. Have we have a good interview? Yes, and I hope that I stomp the Builder AI. So, yes, I have shuffled, which means I have shuffled with a criminal out, so I'm not getting the deed anymore, unfortunately. But at least the AI has got a criminal uh, criminal out, so he's not going to get that um, virtue bonus. And, yeah, I will get a debt from that. So I think I'm all caught up. On that. I've done the hiring. Oh, I've drawn back up early, haven't I? Because I need to evaluate the collision. Get two coins. Two coins. One debt. And then AI does have a criminal, so does not gain a virtue. Okay. I think I'm all caught up. AI. Okay, I don't, I don't have to decide things for him. Let's... Uh... Let's take a break. Oh, he's just lost his criminal as he brings another one out. So he's just going to gain one corruption for that being out. I need to reset my corruption stroke virtue as well. So, criminals, yes. He's going to gain the card from where he is. When he does that, he dismisses a card from where he is as well. So he gets rid of two cards. That's right, isn't it? So that one's gain. Oh no, because he doesn't gain cards like me, he gains future scheme cards. So yes, he will gain a future scheme card into his discard pile. So he's got two now. And whenever he gains a card, he also dismisses the card from where he is, which is going to be this defender. He reshuffles his deck. Now he doesn't have that uh, shuffle penalty, does he? He, in fact, gains a virtue when he shuffles his deck. So he's shuffling it a little bit early. There was only one card left. That means those uh, those tougher future cards have come in a turn earlier, and they're in here now. Then he can move one space over, and he's going to do his preferred action. Oh no! Which means he's going to get the specialized bonus first, doesn't it? Because he can't afford to do a better one. One, two, th no stone three. Sadly for me. They didn't come out in the right order. And so he gets to put out his third cheap building and gain the specialized builder card. And that's that. So I don't get that ability and he's going to get the two points from it. So whenever he shuffles now, he gains a corruption as well. So he's just going to make collisions happen more and more often. So he builds in the first space clockwise from where he is. Is that like ahead of him? Yeah, he moves his corruption marker for putting a criminal out. Just make sure I'm putting the building in the right place. I think I am. The leftmost in clockwise direction available, yeah. So he puts it. I've been putting them right. I'm sure I would have been 
told if I'm doing them wrong. He gets a resource, which for him, all he cares about is gaining stone. Yeah, he gains a... When he got the criminal, he got uh, a corruption, yeah. And he hired the card. He built the building ahead of me. He got the thing. I think we're caught up on him. So, Matilda is leaving my player board. Sliding along. And what have we got? Oh, I I'm drawing a card from my deck. Rather than just playing a card. That would be like, that. that's Chaos Viscounts of the West Kingdom. Just uh, flip the top card of your deck and then play it. Right, my choice. Chevalier. Oh, the th I wanted to do the Thief, didn't I? Because I was going to try and race and do the building, but that's been taken from me now. So maybe you want to work on getting people in the castle? Maybe you just want to keep working on manuscripts. Get the Thief out there. But I think... I could afford to get two people in the castle. I would move three spaces. Yeah, it costs five action points to get three people in in one go. And I've got... One action marker, two, three, and I could dismiss a criminal for four. It's not enough. Could I do any? I don't have any inkwells, unfortunately. And there's no one nearby. If I just put the thief in and moved one, there's no one nearby that I could dismiss for clergy symbols either. Just thinking, you know, make use of the deacon while he's here and get my virtue. So I'm not going to be able to do that. I wouldn't be able to afford. Let's just, yes, Chevalier. Get him out, get to flip things in a bit. And so I have to move three. Two, three. And I've got one. Pay the gold for two, three symbols. And let's get two of my workers out into the castle. Over here. Yes. So I could have hang up. It's, it's three to dismiss him, though. There is an ability you can unlock that's just one to dismiss people all the time. So yeah, I don't want to dismiss the brawler anyway, because it's expensive. Do I want to hire the brawler, though? He's a criminal, but I'd get to reshuffle. I don't have a criminal, so I would get a virtue for that. It's a nice set of abilities, but it's only when he's pushed out as well. Matilda isn't there anymore encouraging me to hire. I don't think I'm going to hire. I could just get a King's Order. And, you know, for the outsiders, the Guardian there will give you points for building the ones that I've nearly built all of. The bot, by the way, doesn't collect outsider cards. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna. No, I'm gonna hang on to my money. Hang on to it. No. Three. I'm getting a king's order. Get in a king's order. So I can discard a card. And that's gonna be. Financer? No, that gets me money straight away. The the squire though, I could build up on castle symbols with this. I wouldn't be able to do it next turn though. Financer, gone. It's done. I, I've hired. There's no collision. Draw back up to four. And we'll look at them in a minute. Because it's AI time. And we've got... Okay, so... Just dismiss the person next to his Viscount. So that's going to be... Rearrange his player board. When he rearranges his player board... He actually dismisses the rightmost outsider cards... So I'll do that, and let's refresh the display. And he gains a resource. You know that he yeah, he hasn't got much stone because he's been spending it, so he gains a stone. And so the new outsiders, the carpenter. A point for every group group. I haven't seen all of these. A point for every building link. Oh, of course, yeah, it's got the dots. Where you've got the building on both sides. And the translator, three points extra for every set of manuscripts. Ooh. I know I haven't got a set yet, but that's pretty nice. 19 points per manuscript set that would be if you got him. Well, I'm glad I took that King's Order then. I'd like that translator. Okay, then. So he's dis all that was was dismissing, wasn't it? 
He moves four spaces. One, two, three, four. He's going to build. He's got one, two, three, four building symbols. That's not enough. He's built all these. It's five for this one. So instead, he's going to flip a deed or a debt. Which one? The one he's flipped fewest of. So he flips a deed. And gains a resource. What does he want to gain? He hasn't got six stone yet, so he'll gain a stone. And that's that. Okay, what did I draw? Well, I've got my watchman. So my watchman, when he gets pushed out, I can hire people for free. So I would move one. I can't afford to dismiss the artist. The artist costs three to dismiss. Would give me the third castle symbol I would need to get a couple of people in here. And then I would be able to... Or what I should have done, maybe, is paid a coin to move along and knocked one of his people out of the castle. That would have been a thing to do. Uh, the squire moves you two. That's not going to help me put more people in the castle. So it's not going to be castle whatever... Whoever I play... I'm not going to be able to afford to put people in the castle. So maybe just want to... I don't have inkwells either. I'm a bit low on resources, really. The labourer's gone, so I haven't got that building symbol, unfortunately. So probably going to have to do something cheap merchant-wise. So maybe I want to get the lender out. But then that gets in the way of me doing castle -y things. I wish I had one more money. The Watchman, I would just move one. I would have two symbols so I could gain myself. I could pay a money and then I could destroy a card. Like, say, the Labourer. I'm not going to build many people. Don't need the Labourer. Just so they don't come back. Hmm. Yeah, it's going to be a weak turn. I think, yeah, I'm going to get rid of the trader. Oh, you do get money for who you dismiss. So I would get some more money from dismissing someone else. Financer, that would be three money. I know she's got a nice ability, but I'm going to dismiss her. Because I've spent one, but I'm gaining three back, so I've got a bit of money now. Which now makes me wish I was in this area so I could hire the artist. But I'm not. I'm over here destroying cards. So I'm not going to hire the brawler again. There hasn't been a collision. I draw back up. And what have I got? Not my outsider. Oh, there's still a couple of cards to draw. I have got my Gatherer, though. Get me a King's Order card for free. It'd be nice if Matilda was here as well. But that's uh, that's a decent thing to have out. Okay. AI time. Well, what's he doing? It's criminaling. He's got two criminals out. So he gets two corruption. So there's going to be a collision. Gains a debt. Then... Moves four spaces. One, two, three, four. Collides, so I can rearrange my player board. Do I want to do that? I don't think I do, you know. I want them to stay in. So I could re rearrange it so one of those goes out and their abilities kick off. But I want them both to stay in so that I could at least play, you know, the squire and do a castle action while they're all there. And he moves me two, one, two. I will get to kick some of the AIs out. No, I'm not going to rearrange. You can, that's always optional, the rearranging bit. So then he's going to do his preferred thing, which I'm sure he can afford now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Can't do a great big build and get the diversified builder card yet, but he can build this one for five. One, two, three, spends two stone. Oh, you can see where he's building it. So I've done this one. He's going to come here. He gets a gold. He gets a debt. He's finished. Okay. So for me, the deacon leaves us for now. Slide everyone along. And I think it's castle time. I want to move two spaces and not have to pay. I want to go for the squire. 
Although, now the gatherer's here, I'm tempted. Oh, and I'll be able to hire the artist. Hmm. So, move two spaces. I also get a debt. Oh, for him doing the link. Oh, 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 oh. I see. Thank you. Wondered what I've done then. Uh, right. So. Yeah, I'm moving two spaces because I want to go. One, two. I've got three castle symbols, no resources to spend, which is just two workers again. But. When there are more than three. They only move forward if there are three of your kind in there. But. Then after we've done all of those movement forwards, we check, is there more than three in a region? There is. Just the... They they get the resources right when they're kicked out. Yeah, yeah. They'll never attempt to... When given the chance to bump, they'll bump. I, th I think they would, yeah. Because if I kick his worker out, he's got fewer workers, but he's going to get two coins, which translates to him as a resource. I think it's still worth doing, though, because it's a point per tier, per worker per tier at the end of the game. So right now we're all in tier one. That's four to two points. Get him out of there. He's only got one point. And it will be harder for him to move forward in the future. So instead of gaining two coins, he gains a stone. And I'm closer to being able to move forward with people in the future in there. So yeah, I did that. Do I want to hire the artist? I think I do. I would get to discard a card. She does a castle symbol as well. And when spending a gold, you get two castle symbols once for it instead of just getting the one. So that could be a nice thing to do. Hmm. It's an expensive card. That's that's three of my four money. But you know, when the Watchman clears out, I'll get a free hire as well. Yeah, I'm going to go for it. I'm hiring the artist, which means I can discard a card. I will discard the lender. That's three of my coins gone. I hired, which means I can discard a card as well. I did want to play the gatherer. Now, if I keep hold of the thief... Ooh, if I could remember which cards I had left in my deck. What I've definitely got left in my deck is... The outsider that I got that's got two castle symbols on it. So I will discard the thief because there are only two cards left in my deck and I'm going to draw three. So yeah, let's just get to seeing new cards. I'll discard and then I'll draw back up to four. There's my outsider. There's my rogue. And then we shuffle up. I do not have a criminal, so I gain a virtue. Oh, we never did, um, we never did the bot's collision, did we? I'll say we. I never did the bots collision. I'll shuffle my deck first. In a card. Oh, it's the King's Order, actually. That's not too bad. He gets a resource, which would still be a stone. And two debts. We are powering through these debts. There are three debts left. Wow, how's that happened? Okay. And then I had no criminals, so I would have gained a virtue. And then he resets. Okay. So it's his turn. What's that? You take resources. I think I've caught up with those. Okay. Here's a nasty card. He is going to get a stone and dismiss the person from where he is. So he's dismissing the brawler and reshuffling his deck. And when he reshuffles, he gets a virtue and a corruption. Then he moves three spaces. One, two, three. And he's going to build, which, yeah, he is. He's got three symbols on his board. He's got four stone, which means he's going to build the good one. And he's got diversified. I am just going to get destroyed again, aren't I? Ah. Let's get in the castle. Let's get some points from that. Get some majority. Get a third blue manuscript. If they ever come out, though, he's never going to do manuscripts, is he? So he's never going to be uncovering new ones for me. Right, so build in. Yes, three. Spend all of his stone. Oh, he can't build? Oh, that's... Thanks, Matt. Actually, 
ha, huh, that's that's why I went there. I had a sense. Uh, I've, I've blocked off the space that uh, he could have built in. So he is going to manuscript. No, he isn't. He's got one manuscript point. So no, he is not. He's going to gain a deed and a debt. Is this going to be a really fast game? I suppose I've been going for a while, but yeah, there's two debts left. The game ends when one of those piles runs out, so you want the most flipped deeds. I've only got one deed in total. Okay, and he's got a load of minus points from taking all of those things, so hopefully that'll work in my favour, but <laughs> I need to do something while the game's still going. Right then. So that's his turn done. For me, Chevalier goes out. Chevalier. Uh, so I can flip a deed or a debt. Knowing that, do I want to flip a deed? So I would be in joint first with him. If the game does end that way. Or do I want to flip a debt because it would give me a resource? Do you know what? I'm hoping the game doesn't just end immediately. I am going to flip a debt and get the resource. Am I? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because then I can get a gold and I can get a few people in the castle, I think. Because I will have five action symbols. Yes, so we're flipping a debt. Playing a card, it's got to be the rogue. Because then that is two, three, four. And with the gold I just gained, five gold. I have to move one space. I could move more if I want to, but I don't want to. With five action points, I can put three workers out in the castle. One, two, three. And so when you personally have three in one section of the castle, one goes forward and gets you the benefit in the space, which is a stone and an inkwell. And then one goes either side. And you might notice that now I've got three over here as well. And these being here, so when you get three in the second tier section, they don't go side to side. See, it hasn't got the arrows, but they help you just getting people into the middle where they're worth three points each. Uh, so I've got three workers here now. One can go forward. So the ability here, get a gold or move someone in the first tier from side to side. I want the gold. Maybe I'm going to get to do this again next time. While the rogue's in my player board. And then a worker goes from side to side. Now there's three in this section. So side to side and forward. I can have a free hire or I can destroy a card. Okay, if I had a free hire, what could they get me right now? Virtue, rearranging things on my player board. Virtue, corruption. I could just hire someone for virtue. Maybe I get a manuscript that rewards me for having loads of a symbol, but I don't think we're going to see many manuscripts because the game's going to be too quick. I could just get a King's Order card. Can always get a King's Order. I don't particularly want to destroy a card, do I? I normally I would, but the, the game's going too quick. I think I'm going to gain a card, the King's Order card, because then that lets me discard a card. I'm going to discard the Gatherer because... Oh, actually, great point, Francis. I could destroy a card. Knowing that the game's over very soon, maybe I just scrap the Chevalier and get my three money back. Because, yeah, it's not just thinning out your deck. You get money for them. I could get rid of the King's Order that I gained. <gasps> I could get rid of the King's Order that I gained. I don't think I get the three money, do I? No, you do get the three money. I'm pretty sure it specifically says you get the three money. You get the three money, and then you dismiss one of the outsiders and get their abilities on the side. I don't want to get a debt. Don't do that to me. But... Yeah. I could get a deed. Two people in the castle? Wouldn't that let me put people forward again? That's just putting people out in the castle, isn't it? In tier one, isn't it? Put two people out in the first tier section of the castle, which would give me... 
I could put them here for two virtue. I could put them here for flipping a deed or a debt. Yeah, it's two corruption, but... And then the translator would still be out to get later. Yeah. So we're, dis we're destroying the king's order, which gives me three silver. So the... And we get to show off some uh, tasty decisions that the Gates of Gold expansion gives you with the outsiders. Not just gaining them for points. Now we get to... Two corruption, but two more people in the in, in a tier one section of the castle, any tier one section. Which means I can put them in almost any section and they're gonna advance. So flipping put them over gold, stroke move, and you can get another combo. Oh, you are absolutely right. Thanks, Matt. Because if I if I pop them here, then they will go forward, side, side. There's you know, more people are in the castle for points. More people have gone into tier two now. But if I take the ability, move someone side to side, I can move them here from this section and they will happen again. One forward, one side to side. And look at those points suddenly from practically no points in the game to some points. So maybe we're maybe we're in it to win it. Okay, I'm in this section. Do I want to recruit? I have a bit of money. It's just getting a virtue though. I'm not bothered about the card. I don't think so. I could get a king's order now I've got rid of it. But again, I don't think so. No. I've got the money. Money might help me move later, though, to a section. If I can get more people out next time, right? Oh, thanks, Daryl. Yeah, Stone and Inkwell. We'll definitely, even if even if the AI gain, even if the AI ends the game, we get one more round, which means I've still got all these people putting people out in the castle. As long as I keep money to be able to go to a section, I'll be able to put enough people out in the castle that I'll get someone in the middle which will get me the leader card, which is only a, a few points, but points is what we need. And it's points for being in the middle and stuff as well. So yeah, I've had all of the stuff. I'm not going to buy my hand size is four. So there's the deacon. There's Matilda encouraging me. I think, I think you're all talking about the stone and Enquil. I think I've caught up on that. Right. Yes. AI time and watch him completely get in my way somehow. Okay, criminals. He's got two criminals. One, two. He is going to gain a future card, which also means that he dismisses the card next to him, which is the peddler. And that gets him a virtue. If a collision happens somehow, which we're one away from now, he would trigger the end of the game. He moves one space. He builds. He can build now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He can build his best thing, which is he gets a bonus. It lasts like an extra symbol, isn't it, to do the actions with for the future, like I can get. He builds his best thing, leftmost space, flips a deed or a debt. He's flipped one of each. So if he has to choose, if they're tied and he needs to choose, he flips a debt. And gets a resource, which is a stone. Which might be able to help me if I can gain another deed and then flip two of them. Mm, it's unlikely. But that's that's 12 points for having the most flipped deeds. Uh, we also need to see another outsider. It's the, the mercenary there. Two free hires for dismissing her. And a point for every two people in the second tier, is that? Of the castle. Which, you know, that, that would be points. It would be really good if I could get a black... Um, you know what I mean. Manuscript. There's one over here. Three points each. And that one's got flip on it. Hmm. But I don't want to lose the opportunity of putting all these people out in the castle while I've got all of these castle symbols. Okay, he's been... He's old news. On to the new stuff. The Watchman. Do I want... to get a free hire? Or destroy a card same choice again I wish I had a king's order to destroy 
So I'm not really excited again by the choices out here for virtue and stuff. Although if I got a load of virtue and triggered a collision, it wouldn't be too terrible. I do have inkwells. So I'm thinking. So I might only have two turns left. What do you reckon to this? Put out. Maybe I'd, yeah, put out the deacon, right? Hire someone that gives me a virtue. Put out the deacon. Gives you a virtue when you get a manuscript. So I'll get a virtue from the from the hiring. Do a manuscript action because I have one, two inkwells. I can get this black manuscript for three. Let's me flip a deed. The collision that results will get me another deed. I don't know that I can flip that next turn. It'd be amazing if I could. Because if I could, I'll win the majority. Because the game surely is going to end from not having enough debts. There are two left. Or on the other hand, you know, I've got a criminal. I just play Matilda there. And then I've got one, two, three, four, five castle symbols. That's another three going out. And I could get the virtue from doing that. I wouldn't have another debt, though. Is the downside there. Yeah, it's, it's going to be. So whoever has the most flipped... Assuming the game is going to end because the debt's run out. Whoever has... In a two-player game... Whoever has the most flipped deeds, so the opposite thing, gets 12 points. And there is no second place. We skip straight to the third place scoring. So it's 12 and 4 points. So it's you know, an 8 point swing is pretty significant. Yes, I am going to do um, Keeper of Keys this time next week. I'm going to be right back here and showing the other bits off. I would get a deed from Collision. Yeah. Yeah, I'd get if I if I cause the collision by taking a manuscript, then I would get to flip a deed and the collision would get me my second deed. And if I could flip that before the end of the game, maybe I'll have more than him and I'll get the 12 points. Or while I've got the rogue out, do I just concentrate on putting three people into the castle at a time? Because that can cause a collision as well. And people in the castle are just points and will get me other things. That kind of pushed me towards there. But at the same time, another black manuscript. If we check over my manuscript board here. I know I haven't used any of the abilities. Uh, but I've, I've used um, when you're gaining a card, you can gain a King's Order instead. I haven't really used. You, know, you can use resources as coins. Three resources to rearrange your player board. I haven't unlocked this one yet. Two coins and you can draw a card. But yeah, the... The black manuscript would also be worth seven points. Now the rogue's gonna let me flip, so I can flip more and more guaranteed. Yeah. Oh, it's tough. So if I did the manuscript right, I would pay and I would be there. Let's assume that. He gets corruption. He ends the game next time. Which he could do. Because if I... If I cause a collision... That is... On the good side. He's got criminals out. So he will gain... A corruption. Which means... He will have a collision. And gain the second... Gain the last debt. Come back to you instead of none of this. <laughs> Go back. Hopefully, I'll you, even if I didn't explain uh, the whole of bike counts, you know, I've, I've done two. I did a live playthrough of this just with the base game, and I did a, a playthrough of the co-op mode, like separate to this Kickstarter and all of this brand new stuff. There is a Tome Saga expansion to the three West Kingdom games where you can play the three games as a competitive campaign 
and you know, have cumulative scores and abilities going through that. But what I really like about it is you can play all three games as cooperative games instead. Yeah, there, there is a lot of, like, if you don't know what's going on, it, it's just Icon City. Uh, the Kickstarter for the Vicance expansion starts on the 11th of January, so next week. Right. So, yeah, the, the decision is, so if I go here and he ends the game, I have one more turn. I wouldn't have the Rogue the turn after. Whereas... If I just move a bit, what if I just move one like this and put a load of people in the castle here? I know that's not brilliant for its ability. It gets me two virtue and it causes the collision and all of that. And then next time I can just put the deacon out and flip the card next time. Reckon? Then you have one last turn which you can use for the castle. I think I think while I've got rogue I suppose having people in the castle is just one more point Rogue's not going to be there next time oh no rogue will be there next time because I'm I'm putting this down as if I'm playing it this turn I can't get more castle symbols from anywhere that's around me. And if I get the manuscript this turn, next turn we could spend all of our money and go to the best place in the castle. Yeah, let's... <laughs> so way back when, the Watchman got pushed out <laughs> for the massive turn. I can hire anyone for free. I'm going to hire the Miner because he gives me a virtue. Boom. I'm going to play the deacon. Whenever I get a manuscript, I get a virtue. So I move two. So I don't even have to pay extra. Here we go. We don't even have to change the camera angle. There I am. I could hang on to my inkwell, actually, and just get the illusionist. But I don't think there's any point doing that. You don't get money for resources. I only have one deacon, but I have two inkwells. I would get to rearrange. So actually, I could rearrange and make sure that the rogue and squire stay in. <gasps> yeah, hang on to one of the inkwells and pay a coin to dismiss the illusionist for his criminal symbol. And then rearrange my player board so the Deacon is going to leave next time so the Rogue and the Squire can stay. Brilliant. Okay. So I'm getting the manuscript. Three points. Black manuscript. I have a set now. That's 16 points. I can flip a deed or a debt. Let's flip a deed. As much as I want to get rid of those minus two points, as much as I want resources, I could be in it to win it on the race for flip deeds. Could be. Do I want to hire someone? Hiring the racketeer, I'd get to shuffle my deck. Oh, I did a manuscript, so it gives me a virtue because the deacon's there. If I shuffle, I don't have any criminals, so I'd get another virtue, which is another deed. I'd get two extra deeds. Maybe I could flip both. Seems worth it. Don't forget virtue for the main. Yeah, I think I've just I think I've just caught up on that. It's only a point, but what if the game comes down to a point? What if next turn comes down to wanting a coin that you've just spent? No. Higher. Higher the rack tier. One money. Shuffle your deck. I do not have criminals, so I gain a virtue. Once they've um, collided, they stay collid and uh, just move together. 
<laughs> I think I've worked it out. I think we're there. And so I just need to draw one. Oh, I hired someone so I can discard as well. Do I want to discard? I don't need the gatherer, do I? Sorry, gatherer. I know I hired you uh, with good intention, but yeah. Things went a different way. How many deeds left? Loads. Yeah, I don't, I don't think many deeds have been taken. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we've got the most flipped debts at the moment. Uh, so, collision. I get a coin and two deeds. Does everyone else have a criminal on their player board? Yes, he does. So he gets a corruption, which means he will be triggering a collision next time. Look at the weird delay between the cameras. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So there's still going to be a debt left. Maybe he, if he plays a criminal though, and gets more debts, the game's over. So then I draw back up. Laborer, no. Trader did not want either of those cards. They're not going to help me in any way at all. All right. Yeah, I've, I've had my manuscript now. <laughs> the manuscript here costs five. It's a point for every. Uh, castle symbol you have on your cards, which would be quite a few for me. I don't think I'm going to be able to do f a five manuscript action and loop my way back around here, though. Unfortunately. Hey, let's let's get on with things. After my 20-minute turn. Let's see. Castle dismisses the person next to him, which actually, in this case, is not a corruption. Uh, he discards, which actually is gain a virtue. So he gets a deed as well. When... Oh yeah, reset my virtue track, thank you. Yeah, he dismissed that person. He discarded, which means he gains a virtue. If there's a collision and he hasn't got criminals, he gets to flip a debt, but... He's got criminals. Then he moves two. And he's going to try and do a castle action. Get out of it! One, two, three, four. So he can only put two people in. Uh, so he's spending one of his gold. He puts two people in the section that he's in. It's muscling in. And that's him. Okay, then. So, oh, collision. Well, that's a shame, because I didn't have any criminals. I was going to get a virtue. So he gets a resource, which is stone for him. He gets a deed and a debt. So actually, there is still a debt left. The game, the end of the game has not been triggered. And then I can rearrange my player board. Which, you know, now do I want to panic and try and get that five manuscripts? I don't think so. I don't think that's happening. I kind of want a debt to be gained. <laughs> the game to end. Because you know, I'm geared up to gain some a load of points from that happening. But let's see. So the deacon goes out. I want to play Matilda. She's a criminal, so I get a corruption. And that is four castle symbols. There's five. She only has me moving one space. But I think... If I move another one, I could trigger extra collisions. Yeah, I think I should pay and move there. So I'm putting three people in. Oh, Francis, yes, we're thinking alike. Because then I'll get to do more collisions. So here's three people going in. So now, one goes forward, and I get a gold, or move from side to side. Well, let's have them move from side to side first. So I want moving from side to side happening here, right? Or maybe even from here. 
and then you would go forward, you would go side to side, and I can destroy a card. I don't have a King's Order, sadly. Or gain a card for free. There's nothing that would get debts or anything like that. But it's hiring, and that gets me through my deck a bit. Have I got a King's Order in my deck? Or did I not do that? Uh, gaining Virtue, rearranging my player board. Or to just try and keep the rogue in. It's maybe worth doing. And just keep putting people out in the castle. But then how's the game ever going to end? With a collision at some point. Nothing would let me discard a card. What about... If you can get a King's Order? I don't think discarding a card's the right thing to do. I don't think destroying someone's the right thing to do. Unless I had a King's Order, then I'd definitely be doing it. I could gain a King's Order for free now. Because that would let me discard a card, and then Matilda lets me discard a card, and maybe I can get to something useful with more castle symbols on it. Don't want the Labourer, don't want the Trader. Discard, discard. When I gain a card, I can discard a card. Don't want the Avid either. Uh, and Matilda lets me draw a card. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll keep the Abbot over the Journeyman. And get a coin. And so I draw... There hasn't been a collision. Oh, his collision thing should have been reset. And so I draw three cards. Will one of these have some kind of castle thing on it? Yes. I've got the artist. I don't have any gold. Spend gold to get two symbols. Forgot about that. Oh well. I could get a virtue for a miner. Let's see what we can do. Right. That's me. AI time. Castle first. Yeah, that was that was my uh that was my hire from the castle. So the higher from the castle, I got myself a King's Order card. Oh, yes, I haven't done that, have I? Thank you. Because, yeah, there was three in this section, which means moves forward. No side-to-side -side movement in the second tier. Moves forward into the middle. Gets me. A gold for sure. Well, it's a bit cheeky because I know that I've got the artist now. But, yeah, I'm going for castle. You can see that. And... I get the castle leader card. It's only three points, but it's also a, a clergy symbol. That's a manuscript symbol. I know I have just discarded all of my cards that gave me more of them. No, I kept my habit, didn't I? I need five, though, for the best manuscript card I could get. I can pay money to draw cards now. No, let's, let's leave it at that. It's bot time. And he's going for flip a deed or a debt. Well, that's a shame because he flips what he's got the fewest flipped of, which is a deed. He's now in the lead. Two Viscount movements. And can he do a manuscript? He's got one, two. He's got no inkwells. And the manuscript he's next to costs five. So no, he's not manuscripting. Can he build? He's got one, two, three, four. No, he can't build. He is going to gain a deed. And me draw extra card. Flip a debt, which gets him a stone. I know the saying the the new thing for um, one of the new elements of Gates of Gold is that the Castle Leader card can be different every game. So there are a load of different Castle Leader cards now, instead of just the like it was just this one in the base game. Now you get a random one at the start of the game with a different amount of points. And rather than getting me an extra card in this game, it gets me a clergy symbol. Which, at the beginning of the game, I thought was going to play into what I did. But I, I haven't really gone that way. It's taken me a while to get to putting people in the castle. So he, he gained a deed and flipped a debt, unfortunately. I think that was quite good for him. And I think the longer the game goes on, the stronger he's going to get. But I can't see... Gaining a debt, really, how I'm going to do that unless I force a collision, and collisions are quite a way away right now. 
So surely we want to play the artist. So the squire's leaving. Surely we want to play the artist, because then that's four, five, six symbols. We don't need six symbols. Game's not over, so you can use a castle to flip a deed. Yeah, so I would catch up with him on deeds. I just think that as we keep going, he's going to... I think if he had ended the game when we thought he was going to, I think we would have maybe edged it. We still might, but as it goes on and he keeps flipping things, if if the game ends with both of them going now, then and he wins both, that's that's massive. So I don't necessarily need to play the artist. Did I get to rearrange? I don't think so. It's, it's like on at the end of his last turn when there was a collision, I did. Um, game's not over. Yeah, I can flip one more deed and catch up with him at least. Hi, Shem. Yeah, I hope your interview went well. We got so like the between us, we raced through the deed, the debts. There was there were two debts left, and so there was a there was a massive turn, worrying about if the game ends next turn. I need to do X, Y, Z. And then the game didn't end. So now, uh, reeling from the plans changing. But yeah, I could, I could play the artist. I could play the artist and just not pay the gold yet. And I would still have four symbols, which would be two people out, which still gets me someone further up. Should move me three. I could pay two money to be right back here again and move people around the bottom and get even more people up. What about that? If I did pay the gold... If I paid the gold, she would move me three spaces just on her card. I could pay to move two more. Pay the gold to put three people out there which would move people into the middle again more and more points and i would get to move someone side to side on the outside which would surely result in another go forward and another tier three and by going into tier three i could get gold which next time i can use to pay the artist again so yeah i think it is worth it's expensive but i feel like it's worth going all the way around on this I'm going to do it. Now, of course, like, I would still get to put three people out here. And it wouldn't result in extra collisions right now. I could just pay one, and then I would move one, two, three, pay one to be there, put three out there, get the two virtue. One would slide along here. I would get to flip a deed or a debt. No one would go into the middle, though. And that's the big three points. I'm going all the way around, let's see. One, two, three. Pay two. To get right back to where we came from. I'm going to pay my gold. So we've got two, three, four, five, six symbols. Five gets you three people. Six doesn't help us. But that is three more people out here. Just, just repeating last turn. Three more people out here. Which means you can go forward. You go there. You go there. I can move someone from side to side. Oh. Now, I was thinking, just move someone here and make this trigger and get someone else in the middle. But I think, would it be better to move this one here? And then... They go forward... And I flip a deed in the castle, like we were saying before. And now we've both got two flip deeds. And then there's still three here to think about. So you just go forward. I'm going to choose a gold. And that's some points. I don't know if it's as many as the, the bot is getting, but you can't deny that's points. Now, do I want to buy the partisan? 
I can't afford. I haven't got too money. But... Uh, take the other gold and make the turn again next time. Yeah, if I had another gold by going into the middle. If I had another gold, I would have next turn one, two, three, four, four. I would have five again. And then as long as I moved three, which I could do by paying, I could flip next time. Yeah, maybe I can do it next time. Yeah. I'm going to... Cheeky take backs. So you were there. And you came from there. So we can put you there to go forward. Get me a stone and an inkwell. And maybe we'll get that manuscript before the end of the game. And you'll go forward into the middle and I'll choose to gain gold. And then... Because no matter what, all of these people are three points each in the middle. When you move workers, get get out yellow of the castle. Kicked out one of the four on the right side of the castle. Oh, like when when I'd chosen that side, yeah. But I think this is better, and we'll do that next time. But watch watch the bot now zoom over here and do all of that stuff. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that's better. So we'll do that. I would like to hire the partisan and rearrange my player board so that the rogue stays in, but. I've only got one gold, so I can't. And we have got another clergy symbol. Maybe we can get that. I'm just thinking that's, that's a few points, that is. Right, I only get to draw one card up. It's a leader. Not very helpful. No cards are very helpful for putting more people in the castle at the moment. Pretty two red in the top. We just, oh yeah. And they go side to side now. Because I'm thinking at least next time, if I put people in here or here, then they will trigger each other off, right? Because, say if I put them in here, this one will go forward, and one will go into here, and this one will go off and combo. Oh yeah, I, I could afford the card. Hmm, maybe that's worth doing then. And Matilda would happen. I've got loads of resources. I'm not going to spend any of this stone. It's not worth anything. I could just spend the three resources to rearrange, but I would get a card this way. Maybe I... Yeah, I, th I think that... I think that's worth it. And then I've got resources I could be spending in silver next time as well. And then a criminal's off if a collision happens. Good stuff can happen to me that way. Let's keep the rogue in this. Swap the rogue with Matilda by hiring the partisan. One gold and one resource. And then we can discard another card. Well, I never wanted the lender. And we would draw another card, and I would get a money. So I'm kind of in a similar situation. It's just cost me a stone. Watchman. He's got a castle symbol on him. I don't think I can get to eight. Close, though. So now there are... Oh, yeah, now there are four in that section. So, yeah, I kick, kick them out. And he gets two gold, which translates as a resource to the bot. And it hasn't got six stone yet, so gets a stone. Okay. Bot time. Getting a resource. Hasn't got six stone. Gets a stone. Moves one. You can see him. And then builds. Surely he can build. Yeah, there is one space for him. And it's going to do a connection. <gasps> Moving people on the castle. Ooh. Okay. He can, how many symbols has he got? One, two, loads. Three, four, five, six, seven. He can do another biggie, which isn't good for me points-wise. Actually, he doesn't need to spend one because he's got a permanent one right there. So he gets this out. He's going to destroy a card. When he would destroy a card, he flips a deed or a debt. He has got three flip debts, so he flips a deed. He's winning that. And I've... Yeah, I need the flipping twice. We don't know which one's going to happen yet now. <laughs> Neither are close to happening, but he gets to 
He's completed this link, so he moves someone in the castle. When he would get that a bonus, he gets a virtue instead. I get that bonus, though. And so what do we want? We just want these two things to happen, don't we? And then I can just change my mind next time. Yeah, we want this one to move here, I think. We want this one to move here, and then you go there, you go there, you go forward, flip a deed. So I'm only one behind. And then you go forward, you go there, you go there, and I get to Virtue. Maybe we can make a collision happen, and there's still a lot of deeds. Still five deeds, one debt. Okay, but maybe I can have... Maybe, maybe I can tie for the most uh, deeds. He's done. Matilda leaves us. But I do have... Let's see, I've got the Watchman. Best thing to play is the Watchman, I think. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. Unfortunately. Because if, if you've got eight, you can put four people in there in one go. So with the Watchman, I would be moving one space. Do I want to put three people here? I don't think I can really... I could zoom around again. I've got three stone and a coin. One, two, three, four. I could do that. And then if I put three people here again... I would get the side-to-side -side thing. And... Pay a resource for a gold and a gold for a resource. Hmm? What do you mean? Have I missed something? I would get... I think I can get a gold from anywhere else. Do you mean... Oh, no. Uh, the, the ability I've got is you can uh, pay a... Res like, as soon as you get a manuscript in this column, you can pay a resource to get a silver. You can't... Uh, you can't do it the other way around. I could pay two coins to get... to draw a card. So maybe there's something better in there that I could draw. You can pay three resources to rearrange your math. So I can't, unfortunately, get the gold. What I'm thinking is, though... What if I put three people out here, we would get to move again, there would be side to side, someone could move in from here, you would go forward, side to side, this would happen again, they could move again, would it just make loads happen? I would earn resources and stuff, I could, yeah, as Willem says, I could just move a couple, put people in here and get the flip. But I'm kind of thinking. Can anyone? The jeweler can't really help me. I want a collision as well. So yeah, just moving one more and getting two virtue would put me quite close to a collision. Which do you see what I mean? Like if I pay. I could pay my coin and three stone, because I can spend resources as coins right now, end up back here again, and then I would just have loads in here. So this could potentially trigger twice, couldn't it? That's This is what I'm doing. Let's do it. Then you would go forward, you would go side to side, Someone can move side to side. If you just got one more, you can mix your board for free. On which one? So where do I want to move now? You're just going to go forward. I could... Oh, if you dismiss Townsfolk. 
Yeah, I wish I had that King's Order card that's about here somewhere. Oh, and keep the rogue in, you mean? And the artist. What am I paying here? Two, three, four. I need to pay a gold to be able to do this. I've only got two more workers, by the way. So, like, the dream of doing this forever is, is going to run out. Because once they're gone, they're gone. Yeah, I can get. So maybe I want inkwells now. And where do I want to move something? Just there, higher. Get a virtue, get something like that. And hopefully next time... Like I don't just want more resources, do I? If I hire someone, that might lead to something. And we're set up to get a debt if we want. I could just destroy a card. Wish I had the King's Order to go and get some big you know, two hires or even a deed. We do want flips. So hiring, Corruption, Virtue, Rearrange your player board. I don't think it's that important that the rogue stays in anymore because I've run out of castle people. I only need three symbols to get people in the castle now. And there's two people still out here. And the, the artist makes gold worth two. I could get a King's Order with the Virtue. Pay three resources to see if you get a King's Order. Oh, to draw one to destroy. Am I going to do anything with all of these inkwells? I have got an abbot. It's only one abbot, though. Like, I am close. I've got three inkwells right now. There is a nice five manuscript down here that is a uh, point for every you know, royal symbol. And I've got a few. I don't think loads, but I think it would be five, six points. I have got the clergy symbols because I've got my castle leader bonus. One, two, three, four, and just the abbot would be five. I have to work my way there. But I think get that manuscript next time. So I'm going to hang on to those resources. Hire in someone. Maybe I just want um, a, a virtue. Or, yeah, we will, we'll just hire someone that lets me rearrange the player board and we'll rearrange it so that the watchman is first out because then I can hire or destroy something else and for hiring someone I can discard a card I don't need the miner and then draw back up finish the castle give me points for the oh yeah and one more goes into the middle and I can gain a resource that way. It's not worth having gold, is it, surely? Get a gold. There's going to be a time when you're going to regret saying that. Get a gold. Right. I think we're there. I did not draw my King's Order. I'm starting to wonder, like, maybe I'm just making it up. <laughs> like, there's one card here. Either it's a King's Order or it's probably in the discard pile. The discard pile's pretty big. Uh, right. I have got a racket here, though. When you gain a debt, you can rearrange play board or discard something else. Chevalier, get him out and then put him to the end so I can flip another deed. Maybe. AI, though. Nice and simple. Let's see how he's going to destroy me this time. Get a deed. So I think that's four left now. Move four spots. Or uh, can he go in the castle? He better not. 
One, two, three. He can put two people in the castle. The castle's got unresolved. I think I've caught up with that. I think I've done that now. Uh, he's getting two workers in here. Cheeky. Cheeky. There's now more than three workers in this tier. Not non move forward because he's only got two. But if he gets the choice, he chooses to kick me out. Because you can kick yourself out. Because you might want the two coins or you know, later on it becomes virtue and a resource for kicking yourself out of the second uh, tier. You probably wouldn't want that. There's two points. I suppose it depends how close to the end of the game you are. Now I have three workers for a future castle action. Right. Kick me out. I get two coins. That's his turn. So he's gained himself two points there and lost me a point by kicking me out. Hasn't been a collision. None of that. So yeah. Oh. Now he gets three people. Undo that. Undo that. Because he's got a built-in castle symbol on his board. So he, he's got four by spending that. By spending his last one, he's got five. Which means he puts three in. And he goes forward, side, side. Which means nobody gets kicked out. He's in the middle and gets himself a stone and an inkwell. If I go and pick up the yellow manuscript, do I gain recruit the new card? It's perfect to have the card. In the middle tier. Oh, for, for flipping the card. Yeah, I don't think I've got enough right now. So I've only got two workers again, unfortunately. So I don't think I can get loads of fancy castle stuff to happen. I think it's just going to be one forward and probably flipping a deed. So that doesn't need to happen right now. The artist's going to be in here a while. To get three symbols and put two workers out, I only need the artist and one of my gold. So that doesn't need to happen right this second. The watchman leaves. I can hire someone or destroy someone. Didn't get my king's order. And could spend the resources, but I want to spend... The new one at your top left. Oh, something that's just been uncovered. Oh, this. He had two gold, Matt. I already spent one for him. He had uh, two, three castle symbols and two gold. I put one away straight away when I thought he was just when I thought he just had uh, three to spend, but then I noticed he had one on his uh, thing. Yeah, there's a bit of a lag in the chat. Uh, oh yes, you should have all of the building cards. New one at your top left. Yellow manuscript at my top left. Do I recruit the new card? Oh, do you mean the, do you mean the one that's on my manuscript board? This one here. That is. Um, I think that's how we start the game with a King's Order card. I don't think it's any it's not any ability that I can do something with. It's just that now every uh every human player anyway starts the game with a King's Order card in their deck. I think that's what that if that's what you're referring to, that's what that one means. So I don't have to rush on the castle. Do I want to do the abbot then? And oh, it's it's a bit of a shame that the manuscript that I want and the section of the castle I want to move forward in are the same. Yeah, you know, the next manuscript over here is gain a deed. Well, I haven't got the most flipped debts either. Right, so I I can gain a card, can't I? I'm gaining or destroying a card right now. So. <laughs> if we think this is the King's Order card. I could destroy this. 
And if it's a King's Order card, that will happen. And the Scholar over here gets me a debt, which would trigger the end of the game, but would get me a three or four cost manuscript for free. How can you go recruit the King the King's Order card on the top? Oh, like uh, this bit. So this is like the ability that everyone starts the game with is that whenever you hire a card, whether it's just through the board or you're getting it for free, you can choose instead to have a King's Order card. If you're paying, it costs you three silver. If you're getting it for free, you're getting it for free. I shut them off the board when all of the bonuses were up for grabs. Before the bot took them all. Um, so yeah, hiring. I can get myself a virtue or a corruption. It's not that big, is it? I could destroy someone and get some coins. Well, and then move around, but... Is this a King's Order card? I'm going to destroy this card. What should be something vital to my strategy that I've completely forgot that I hired? It's not a King's Order card. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the King's Order card is in my discard pile. Or I never bought one. And that's something that I argued myself out of ages ago. Right, so we destroyed that. Now we can play a card. Is it going to be the Abbot? Or do we just do the castle and get that out of the way now? Get the Chevalier on. Maybe rearrange the player board and get him out. Because he moves me three, which is where I want to be for the flip. Yeah. One, two, three. I don't even need to pay gold. I've got four symbols right now. Which means the gold could be used as coins later. Okay, two more people here. Really, I could, I could just do an action where I put one person out, couldn't I? I suppose, like, it's a point, them being in there. I could hang on to them and do another action later where they just go up there and then that gets people into the middle, maybe. But I'm just going to put them out. Forward, flip a deed or a debt, side to side. I'm going to flip a deed. I'm tied for flip deeds. I want a debt. Should have got some corruption then, shouldn't you? Okay, I'm here. Now I need to go all the way around and get my manuscript. That's going to be rough. So I just get a virtue for hiring him. I don't think I'm going to. I want rearranging as well. Maybe he's going to land on... I'm not on the outside, so he isn't going to land on me. And I, th I think that's it then. Have I got? A I haven't got a criminal, so I get a virtue. Yeah, maybe should have tried to get some virtue with the free hire. I destroyed, didn't I, instead of hiring, so I don't get to discard anyone. Yeah, the game ending, we'd still get another round, so there's still chance for the bot to earn points in things. He can't get me out of the third tier in the castle, though. And that's hopefully going to catch me up on all of his building points. What have I got? Matilda is back. There's four cards. Right. Uh, bot needs to shuffle, and so gets a virtue and a corruption. Slide these off first, right? Slide that, slide them along first. Now it needs to draw a card, and it can't. Does its things. And hi, Graham. By the way, I re I read your thing and thought uh, make sure you say hi to Graham, and then then time happened. I think I hate it when time happens. I'm sorting through my, uh, like, the last 10 minutes of roller deck centuries. Right. He's doing some building, is he? He's going to dismiss who's next to him. He gets a corruption. Four, two, three, four. He's building, and I bet he can. One, two, three, or oh, definitely four, five, six. Not enough to do another big one, but... 15 points, 9 points. Ah, don't think about it. 3, 4, 5 points. He's going to build here, which gets him an ink. He's going to love that. And there we go. That's his turn. Okay, so... I would love to rearrange my... And I... 
Yeah, I would like to rearrange my player board before the everyone moved out. I can rearrange by putting the Gatherer out. I could gain a King's Order card or rearrange my player board. Just thinking, get the Chevalier out because it lets me flip another thing. I suppose I've flipped all the deeds that I need to now. I need to gain another deed. Matilda would let me just move one and I could gain this. This is three. She would give me one, spend an inkwell for two, three. That's gain another deed. And it's a black. If I'm getting a yellow, if I can manage to make it all the way around, then maybe that's going to be all right. I, yeah. <laughs> Show has to keep reminding me, I can always pay three resources to rearrange as well, because I've got the ability. And then he would get out. If I paid three resources, I don't need this gold anymore for anything. Pay three resources, I could flip a debt, and then I would be caught up on flip debts, and I could gain back the thing that I've lost. So I think that's the thing to do. I don't really need the rogue out here. But yeah, I'll pay three resources to rearrange my playboard first. Then the chevalier moves out. I will flip a debt and gain a resource. I'll gain my inkwell back. And yeah, do I want to just go and get this? It's, it's gaining a deed. And it's another manuscript for another set, if I can do that. I would like, of course, to get a blue, but blue hasn't come out. And he isn't helping me get manuscripts. He hasn't got a single manuscript. Slacking. With the racketeer, of course, whenever you get a debt, you can rearrange or discard. Now let's get Matilda out. Matilda. One. I've got one clergy symbol. Two clergy symbol. Spend this for three. And then Matilda will help me if I come all the way around and get this in the future. Yes. Gain. Th There's a blue one. Okay. Do that. Gain another deed, which is another point. And maybe I'll get to flip it and I'll be in the lead on those. I'm not hiring because it's expensive. And I just need to draw up Architect, who will let me rearrange my player board or discard two things. Bot is... Get in a resource. It's stone. It's always stone. It's not always stone. It's often stone. He's just, he's just spending it well. Gets rid of what's near to him. Gets a virtue. Here we go. The final collision is coming up. Corruption for Matilda. Did I never gain that? I forget your... Oh yeah, I can do one more flip. Yeah, thanks for reminding me, Shane. I've, I've been reminded about that <laughs> before as well when we thought the... When we thought the big uh, calamity event was going to happen. Draw. Yeah, we've got rid of it. He had a virtue. He moves three. And he's doing a build. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, he's not. He is doing a manuscript. No, he's not. One, two. No, definitely not. He's gaining a deed and a debt. He's triggered the end of the game. But he hasn't flipped that deed and debt. He's got three of each flipped. So the game has one more round in it. The, the end of the game has been triggered. Poverty card has happened. So, whoever has the most flipped deeds at the end gets 12. The other person just gets 4. And if the deeds should happen to run out, that majority will happen as well. Most flipped debts. Which, you know, I... Well, I don't actually care at the moment, do I? I tie for both. But he does get the last turn, so we don't know what he's going to do. My turn. And I do get to flip one, don't I? So I, I can try and make one flip. I know that I was only reminded about that two seconds ago, but yeah. <laughs> Let's try to remember that. So can I get a good manuscript here? One, two, three, four, five. It's just I can't make it all the way over here again. I've only got... I could put the abbot out. I would move one, two for free. I would be spending all of my resources to afford the five cost manuscript. I would only be able to move one extra space and I would get another yellow there. So why not then? Well, instead then, why not go for one of these manuscripts? Like this double virtue one could get me
a couple of deeds. It's a couple of points. It's like the abbot moves me too. Yellow is still a, a you know, it's the color I was going to go for. I can even just spend my coin and get another symbol there. This is the last turn, isn't it? This is my last turn. So hiring people... Actually, there's no need to hire people with castle symbols because I didn't get that manuscript. Yeah, I think this is a good move. So moving two because of the abbot. I need four clergy symbols. One, two, three on the castle leader bonus for this particular game. One inkwell is four. There is another yellow manuscript nearly another set there is two virtue nothing else to come from here like i can draw and discard and stuff if i because matilda's still out there i don't think any of that makes a difference to any points that i could get though yeah i think that's pretty much all i can do i could hire the savage but how would that help me i could have got a resource but i think the virtue is better yeah i'm not going to hire anyone Let's get a coin and two D, but then the okay. The only the only risk is if if the bot gets to flip two things. I'm not sure that he can do that. Maybe it's on a future card, or if he gets one of these symbols, like destroying things and stuff, he might get to flip two things. Yeah, by me taking these deeds, prosperity's happened as well. So, both majorities are going to happen. I do have the rogue flipping one of them, though. So if, if he flips one, I can flip the same one, and we both draw. And so he doesn't get a big advantage on anything, at least. If he doesn't flip anything, I can at least win one of them. Draw up. It's not the king's order. Bot. Let's go. He is flipping. And if he can't clergy or build, he's going to flip. This is what we've always feared. So he's flipped three of each, which means he will flip debt as a priority, which gives him a stone. Oh, if he gets to build his best thing, though, I think that's more harmful than him winning the majorities. Uh, probably not. Three... Four, five, six, seven. He is getting to build his best thing. No, he isn't. There isn't. He hasn't moved yet. Uh, so he flipped. He flipped. He got a stone. He moves two spaces. He can build. But manuscript is the first thing. Can he manuscript? Ooh, I think he can. One, two, three. And just as I planned it, of course, there is a manuscript hanging out there so he can manuscript he will get a point for that for you know sets like i do and he gets a virtue which means he oh he should have got a corruption as well and then he got a virtue so it would still move because uh i know he would have got a virtue wouldn't he yeah he would have got a virtue from my cor from no, he wouldn't. He wouldn't get anything from my collision because he didn't have a criminal. Ignore me. Just for that bit. Uh, he gets a virtue now, which is going to trigger a collision, which gives him a resource, and he gets points for these, and a deed when there are no deeds left. The deeds shall walk the earth. I do, I do have a criminal. I don't think that's going to matter, will it? Then. That's it, right? Yeah, he's done his thing, so he isn't going to flip another thing. His... His second trading input. Oh, yeah! Oh, so what's going to happen? Yeah, like, yeah when, when there's a collision and he hasn't got a debt, he gets to flip a debt. No. 
when there is a collision and he hasn't got a criminal, he gets to flip a debt. So he's basically, he won debts. And he gets a resource, which is going to be another stone. And... Oh, when he flips either, he gets to dismiss what's next to him. He's just flipped two things. He flipped before he moved, so he should have got a corruption, actually. And then he would flip after he moved. So he gains a debt as well, because he's in the middle now. Everything else is the same. I could rearrange. I didn't gain a corruption. I could rearrange, but it doesn't matter because the game's over. And then, for flipping that as a bonus, he gets to discard that one and gets a thing. But yeah, it yeah it just means that he wins debts by a mile. But it doesn't matter how many you win and buy. I can win deeds now. Uh, right. So, and he's got he's got a fair few debts piled up. Like I've, I've had to squash them together. Right, so I think that takes care of his last collision. So, points wise, I'm going to get out my trusty Garfield Games Companion. I should have linked this up so it would be all. I'm not that high tech. All of the iPad stuff from last night has been uh, dismantled. So like this, just got to remember that the app hasn't got all of the brand new things in it, but it, it's just new majority cards that I need to remember to add on. Of course I've got the Garfield Companion app. Uh, remember to flip your last deed. Yes. So let's, let's just do that now. So he's definitely won debts. I will flip a deed. Boom. So uh, yeah, let's say I'm Lothair. Next. So constructed buildings. This is going to be nasty. I've got five points for constructing two tiny buildings. He has got... He didn't get this one out, at least. 13 plus 15, 28 plus 9, 37. I feel like I've got something like that from the castle, though, right? That's a lot of people in the castle. That's all of my people in the castle. Continue. Workers in the castle. So, points for their tier. So we've got 3, 6, 9, 12, 15... 17, 19, 21, 23, 25, 27, 29, 31, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. So I did slightly better in the castle than he did from building, but he is in the castle as well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. No, I did a bit of building as well. Yeah, I, th I think I've come out a little bit ahead there. Yeah, 44 to 43. Tiny. It's basically a draw. I don't even need to count. Wait, where's the suspense? Manuscripts, though. Here we go. Oh, do you mean like the debts and deeds and that? So manuscripts, I've got a full set. That's 16. And I've got a set with three in it. That's nine. That's 25 points. I'm holding out for hope. He only ever did the manuscript action once this game. That's one point. He will get points for resources, though. So he's got another five stored up there. Castle leader and cleric bonus. So didn't manage to get the cleric bonus. I do have the three-point castle leader. And the bot got... Um, just the, the diversified and the specialized builder cards. Didn't care about the abilities, but gets the five points. So has caught up a little bit on there. But... Unpaid debts. So I've got an unpaid debt. That's minus two points. And one, two, three, four, five, six unpaid debts. That's how he raced through the debt pile. So that's minus 12 points. Deeds. Three, six, nine, twelve, thirteen, fourteen for me. And he gets 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Same. 
He must have a terrible credit score. Are oh, you making a joke, Matt? I missed that. I'm I'm deep in scoring mode. Poverty card. So he wins. No, he wins prosperity, doesn't he? I win the poverty card, which doesn't matter. It's twelve points to me. It's four points to him. But I think, yeah, he's he's not getting points from anywhere else, is he? Uh, prosperity card. Did I just give myself that? Yeah, I gave myself the poverty card, which is right. He gets the prosperity card. So four for me and 12 for him. AI resources, one, two, three, four, five. And I think that is it. I know we're a bit like, a bit maybe wavy from, hey, you can see the camera. Uh, yeah, 100 to 72. I think, yeah, I don't think I've ever, like, it was strange, wasn't it? Like, I'm very pleased with that. Uh, but yeah, the, he, w when it was like at that climax point where we thought the game was going to end, because like, we weren't really thinking about the fact that he'd taken a ridiculous number of debts really early and not really flipped that many. So busy building around uh, and letting me run rampant in the castle, like, Good job doing that. I think that's me learning my lesson from. Although it was a while ago now. The last you can watch my stream of when I did the base game solo. I was playing against the castle AI, I think, and I didn't do the castle. Also, got all of the points from the castle, and I, I think it turned out at the end that I hadn't really got much done throughout all of that. But there we go. That is a result. Can I repeat it next time? So we've definitely done the castle AI. We've done the builder AI now. I know I didn't win against the castle, but yeah, we'll, we'll pick a different AI. If I turn up next week and I've got this AI again, remind me to change it over. We'll play with a different personality and we will be playing, that was, the Gates of Gold expansion. This time next week, I will be back with more Viscounts and the Keeper of the Keys expansion, which, it's got treasure chests, it's got heroes, it's got intrigue, it's got all, this, it's got all different stuff, basically. More stuff for Viscounts, but today this has been the... Manuscript boards, the King's Orders, the Outsiders, the extra cards that came with all of this stuff. The flipping AI. Oh yeah, there's an AI that isn't like... The box is right by Marty, I won't disturb him. Yeah, there's, there's an AI that just that just mainly flips things. Uh, can you combine both? I, I haven't played it with both, but I assume, Shem, you... you can you combine them? Like, the, the things don't... I don't feel like the things get in the way of each other, but yeah, I, I would imagine so. But I'll wait for confirmation. Hi, Jose. Thanks. The bots get set. Yeah, like this. This is an exception. The way that he's, the way that the bot has gone this time has been very strange. Like when we were all surprised that, oh, the game is about to end. It didn't, but it could have. Like if he had done something on that turn that would have earned him one corruption, he would have moved over to the next space, he would have taken the last debt, and the game would have ended... 45 minutes ago? And like, so, I knew at any time, I didn't really have a way of gaining debt, because I wasn't really very corrupt, this game. But I could have, like, if I'd felt that I was in a strong position, I could have forced it through by earning a debt from somewhere, just hiring some criminals and putting them all out together. Yeah, you can you can combine them together, but yeah, there's just they're separate things. But then it's like, yeah, you can get the king's order to get the outsiders instead. You can get the heroes as well. You've got the treasure. I'll look look forward to whole new player boards. There are holes in the player boards. That's that's all for next week. Uh, but yes, I will be back next week, same time, Thursday, eight p.m. GMT, and we'll do this again. Different AI, different expansion, and you can see all of that stuff. The Kickstarter for these expansions goes live on the 11th of January, so next week as well. And yeah, I'll see you there. There'll be stuff in the meantime. I think, yeah, tomorrow we're streaming, 5pm. Rach is joining me again, and we're going to get back into roleplayer adventures after a few weeks off. And hopefully do some nice things, figure out our morality at some point. And there'll be stuff next week. Definitely Keeper of the Keys, as I've said. Thanks everyone for being here. 
it's been great. Thanks for all of your help as well. I don't think that uh, being in the bot would have happened definitely for me forgetting loads of the stuff that I was doing. Uh, but yeah, thanks for all of your help and all of your chat and for joining me. I hope you can make it next week. And yeah, tune in for the Kickstarter. You can like get notified and stuff when it launches. But just remember, remember the 11th of January. Thanks, Shem, for sending these over and asking me to do all of this stuff. And that's why it's happening just a little bit early. I think that is everything. Oh yeah, you can you can subscribe to me in all of the places and the things that I'm supposed to say throughout the stream that I remember right at the end of it at patreon.com forward slash slicker drips if you'd like to help me keep doing all of this as well. But uh, yeah, thanks most of all for being here and spending your time with me. I promise these outros do end eventually. Thanks everyone. I'll see you very, very soon. Thanks everyone. Thanks Francis. Thank you. Thanks Daryl. Yes, follow on Twitch as well. It is hard to play and talk at the same time. I do kind of get uh, distracted and uh, forget where my mind's going just when I'm sitting on my own. But yeah, as soon as like I see another possibility and then like, oh, the whole chain of bonuses I was about to get is gone. But yes, thanks for reminding me of everything and keeping me honest. Hopefully it's been uh, an honest win. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you very, very soon. Bye.